Hiya, Sam. Hello, Oppenheimer. Hi. Meet Johnny Williams, the Herald's gift to the police department. This is Lieutenant Carson, Sergeant Oppenheimer. Hi, Hi. young fella. It's yeah, sure nice to meet you guys. You love him when you get to know him better. Johnny's fixing to clean up the department. I thought you ought to look him over. Oh, cut it out, eh? The Herald's a good paper, Johnny. That's the best paper in town, Lieutenant. The Herald has ideals. Only the truth is fit to print. I wish I could say as much for that rag of yours, Ames. Thanks, Lieutenant. It's your first day on the police run, Johnny? Yeah. Gosh, I hope I don't pull any boners. You won't. Drop around and see me any time you feel like it. Maybe I'll come up with a scoop one of these days just to keep Ames and the rest of those pelicans in line. Yeah, that'd be great, Lieutenant. Yeah, I sure need one. <laughs> come on, Johnny, meet the rest of the gang. Okay, game. I'll see you later. All right. Bye. That's a tough assignment for that nice kid. Oh, it won't hurt him. Won't do us any harm, either. I'm going down to the Dutchman's for an egg sandwich. I'll go along with you. Meet Johnny Williams of the Herald. Hey, I'm Hello, City Newsboro, Sergeant. Don't get up, gentlemen. What is this, a gag? It's Walter Bard. Runs a private detective agency in the Equitable building. Well, they picked a fine spot to dump him. Looks like somebody's trying to give the department the business. Get going, Oppenheimer. Yeah. Precious sakes alive, it's Mr. Bard. Do you know anything about this? Not me, N not me. I just sell him flowers. Take this into the desk. Right. Hey, Sam. What have you got? What do you think? Hey, Sam Carson's first gonna step on the sidewalk in front of the station. That's the name of the game, Jim. Don't forget you owe me two bits. Check this gun with ballistics as soon as you can, then have the car gone over for fingerprints. Hey, Sam, who's the... Hey, it's Walter Bart. Dumped right in front of the station. I couldn't get any closer. Boy, there's gonna be a stink about this. Yeah, it was mixed up in politics, wasn't it? He was mixed up on everything. He's been asking for something like this for a long time. What's the matter, Johnny? You know, I never saw a dead man before. Oh, Give me Charlie to make a snack. Hello. Hello. Hold on to your wig, Charlie. Walter Bard, the private eye, was just found shot to death in his car, right at the front door of the joint. Evidently a definite slap at the prison administration. You can call it a culmination of the hoodlum war that's been going on. Yeah. Say that it's gangland's despairing reply to the vigilance of the police. Huh? Sure, play it up big, lay it on thick. Everybody's gonna be taking pot shots at the administration over this little deal, and the Express is its only friend. Oppenheimer, go up to Obad's apartment, bring back any letters or photographs that might look hot. See if you can get Bard's wife on the phone. Talk to the janitor and neighbors. Get a line on any recent visitors. Okay, Lieutenant. Harper, you chase up to Bard's office in the Equitable building. Go through his desk and files. Check his appointment calendar. Yes. Well, Lieutenant, I just happened to think. Bard used to hang out at Tony's on 2nd Street quite a lot. Good idea. Say, Wilson, go over there and ask Tony if Bard met anyone there tonight. Then give Oppenheimer a hand if he needs to. Right. Yes? Mrs. Bard doesn't answer, Lieutenant. She's probably sleeping. Keep on trying. Okay. Johnny, this is Daniel Boone Wintergreen. He covers police for the sun. Also has the poesy corner on the side. Meet Johnny Williams of the Herald. Right. Pleasure to meet you, my boy. I can see that you'll be a welcome contrast to the riffraff that infests this mortuary. When are you gonna get rid of that moth-eaten trophy you got on? Sir, this buffalo coat belonged to my grandfather, Daniel Boone Wintergreen, noted Indian fighter. Nothing would persuade me to part with it, except a temporary shortage of funds. Are you in need of a good overcoat, Mr. Williams? Hey, lay off him, Wintergreen. On a hot day, that coat gets higher than the stockyards in the south wind.
Come in, Doc. Well, here it is, Sam. The bullet went clean through him, smashed the fifth rib. Have you boys found it yet? In the front seat upholstery. Discharge from the gun that was in the car? Mm-hmm. His own. There were plenty of powder burns, Sam. Could have been suicide. Not a chance, Doc. The boys at the desk would have heard the shot. The body was driven there in Bart's car and left there. Oh, I'm sure you're right, Sam. Do you think someone's trying to discredit us in the administration? Could be. Holy mackerel. That girl couldn't be mixed up in this case. Well, this is very interesting. The daughter of Luther Bradley, the reform candidate for mayor. Boy, what the Express will do with this. Send Brewer in. Must be some other Bradley. Somehow, I don't think it is. Why? The famous Calvert Luck, my boy. Brewer, you and Robbins go out to the Luther Bradley house on Carlisle. Ask for Miss Janet Bradley. Tell her you'd appreciate it if she'd come back with you. We want to ask her a few questions. Okay. Handle her carefully. All we want is her cooperation. Stress that, Brewer. Yes? Mrs. Barr still doesn't answer. Keep trying. Express, I want to speak to Mr. Calvert. Very important. It's Dr. Yeager talking. Hello? Yeah, this is Calvert. Oh, hello, Doc. What's on your mind? Walter Bard. Sure I know him. Well, who shot him? I don't know. But his body was found in his own car right in front of the police station here. That's right, the police station. And get this, Mr. Calvert. There was a notation in Bard's memorandum book that he had an appointment with Janet Bradley this evening. Luther Bradley's daughter? Are you sure? Oh, 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 oh this is beautiful. Look, Doc, you stay there and keep your eyes open. I'll keep in touch with you. Oh, I'll be right here, Mr. Calvert. You can count on me. Goodbye. This is Miss Bradley, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Carson. How do you do? Sorry we had to bring you out this hour of the night, Miss Bradley. Sit down, please. What do you know about a man named Walter Bard? You knew him? Knew him? He was murdered this evening. Oh. In his own car, shot. I found him about 11.45 in front of this police station. You did know him? Yes, I, I knew him. Seen him recently? This evening. I had an appointment with him at his apartment. Were you a friend of his, Miss Bradley? No. Suppose you tell me why you went to see him. I'm sorry, I can't. Private? That's not so good. Is your father still in Washington? Yes, he'll be back on Monday in time for the election. This murder could prove very embarrassing for your father, Miss Bradley. Dead body on your doorstep could prove very embarrassing for the department, too, Lieutenant Carson. Maybe. Do you mind very much if we take your fingerprints? Is that necessary? Well, it's a routine we follow, but of course, if you'd rather not. Very well. Thank you. This way, please. Now the right hand. It's fine. You can wipe off your hands with this. Oh, thank you. My uh, photograph next, Lieutenant. Sitting's by appointment only. That's all there is to it. Classified up, huh? It will take a few minutes to make comparisons. You don't mind waiting. Of course not. Right in there. You're being swell about this. Yes? Max Calvert to see you, Lieutenant. Send him in. Thanks, Sam. I just thought I'd drop in and say hello. I figured you'd be around. Well, I don't wonder you're sore, Sam. Someone giving the police department the business, huh? The administration, too. The administration's your problem. Ah, oh, now that's not the attitude to take, Sam. Don't forget, we got an election coming up next Tuesday. I'm a policeman, not a politician. 
I know, but a politician sometimes could do an awful lot for a policeman, Sam. I understand you got the Bradley girl down here. So you know all about that, huh? Well, people usually cooperate with me, Sam. She was with Bard this evening, wasn't she? I'm not making any statements, and when I do, the Express will get it, along with the other papers. Well, you're not letting a pretty face affect your better judgment, are you, Sam? I'm not letting that tabloid of yours spare that girl's reputation so you can stop Luther Bradley on Tuesday. Well, the public has the right to know the facts, Express Princeton. Yeah, anything for a nickel. <laughs> Look, Sam, how long have you had this job? Long enough. When you first came into this department, I was still on the police run for the Express. Now, I own it. While we're looking around, look at Mike Shea there. Now, Mike was your type of cop here. He never played ball. So what did it get him? A load of lead in the belly. Ah, you ought to be smart, Sam. Look, is Bradley anything to you? No. Well, Jordan's on his way out. How'd you like to be chief? I'd like it. You know that, Calvert. Could be arranged. How? Well, if this Bradley girl were booked, it might please some very important people very much. And they might be willing to do a lot for you. There isn't a particle of evidence against her. Well, no one would criticize you if you'd book her anyway. Not suspicion or a material witness, anything you like. Until after the election. Then let her go. <laughs> She'd be all right. Do that, you'd have a grand jury investigation right in your lap. Oh, Sam, now don't look at it that way. Why, a week after the election, the whole thing will be completely forgotten. Think it over. Don't forget, Sam, it always pays to cooperate. Always pays. 